Okay, uh, we're back today. Today we're doing chapter six, 6.5, division of polynomials. Uh, when we divide polynomials, there's going to be two different types that we divide. One is going to be uh, dividing monomials, which means only a single term. And then the other one's going to be dividing binomials, which means that there's two terms involved uh, of the division. So there's two different um, pieces that we're going to go through. And the first piece is dividing a single term, which is a monomial. So if you look at the example uh, that's shown as number one, that's asking you to divide that trinomial in that case by the uh, monomial of 6x. So there's two steps that we do. The first step is to divide each term by the monomial that you're asking or that it's asking you to divide by. So in this case, we're just going to divide each term by 6x. So we're just going to put it underneath. And when we do this division, uh, we're dividing using our uh, exponent rules. So if we look at the coefficients, 6 divided by 6 would give me a 1. The single x, and then there's an x to the fourth up top. That means that it's uh, 4 minus 1 would be x to the third. And then from there, 12 divided by 6 gives me a 2. And then x to the third divided by an x to the first power tells me that there's two x's. And then if we do negative 6 divided by 6, that's negative 1. And then if we do x squared divided by x, that leaves you with 1x. So when we divide this, it would be 1x cubed plus 2x squared minus an x. And that would be your final answer. If this was um, pulling out a GCF is when you put the 6x on the outside, but it's not asking you to do that part. So then the other way that we can, uh, or the other thing that we can do is just clean this up and not put the ones if you don't want to uh, out front. It means the same thing if there are no ones. So that could be another answer, and we would accept both answers with the ones or without the ones. So that's our first one. That's an easy one. Our next one is a little bit tougher. It's asking you to divide each term by 6y to the second power. So I'm going to put a 6y squared underneath each one of these terms. So 9 divided by 6 doesn't divide in evenly, but what we can do is we can simplify that fraction. If in your calculator you do 9 divided by 6 math frac, that will give you 3 halves. And then we have to decide, are there more y's in the top or bottom? And in this case, there's 10 more y's in the top. So I'll have y to the 10th up top. The next one would be negative 18 divided by 6. And that gives me a whole number of negative 3. Uh, 8 minus 2 says that there's 6 y's left over up top. The 6's would cancel to give me positive 1. And then the y's, 6 minus 2, would give me y to the 4th. And then negative 12 divided by 6 is negative 2. And the y squareds would actually cancel each other out. So this would be your answer. There's another way that you can write this. Just like the last one, if we wrote 3 halves and wrote y to the 10th off to the side, that's fine. Because that y to the 10th is still over 1. Uh, so that means it's on top. And then if we didn't want to write the 1 in front of this y to the 4th, that's fine as well. So that would be your answer for either answer of those would be good for number 2. So that's your dividing by monomials. The next part here is dividing by a binomial. When you divide by a binomial, for this course, we're only going to be dividing by binomials with an x to the first out front. Um, and whenever we see a binomial with a uh, x to the first or a first degree bin binomial with uh, no coefficient, you can do what's called synthetic division which becomes a very fast way of division um, for our polynomials. So the first step up the top here, if we um, take a look here, are the steps, okay? Uh, the first step that you should do is write down this elongated L for your synthetic, and then all your coefficients go inside the top row of that L. 
So if we take a look at my first coefficient, there's a 1 there. So I'm going to write a 1. And then my next coefficient's a negative 5. My next coefficient's a 2, and then an 8. So those would be the coefficients in order from x to the third, x squared, x to the first, and then your constant. And then the number that we're going to put on the outside, on the top left, would be the answer if you made that binomial equal to zero. And if we solve, we get x equals two. So that's what goes on the outside always. So whatever the binomial equals, if you solved it, is what's going to go on the top left. So that's the setup of all synthetic division um, pieces. And then from here, the math is very simple. You always drop down the first number and you multiply the outside numbers. So these outside numbers are a 2 and a 1. So if you multiply it, that goes in the next spot to the right. And then you're supposed to add what's inside together. Negative 5 plus 2 gives you negative 3. And then we still multiply, like we did in the previous step, multiply the outside numbers. And that would be negative 6, 2 times negative 3. And then we add down vertically. 2 plus negative 6 is negative 4. And then we multiply the outside numbers. We get negative 8. You add those together, we get a 0. So this is the answer setup always. This first number is considered our remainder. So right here, it tells us that we have a remainder of 0. So that means that this binomial went into it evenly, did not have a remainder. This next number is always my constant. So that would be just a negative 4. The next number here is my x to the first. And this number here will always be my x squared. So those are the coefficients that would be in front of x squared and x to the first. So my answer would be 1x squared minus 3x minus 4. And there's no remainder. So that would be my answer if you divided that polynomial up top divided by x minus 2. So you'd get 1x squared minus 3x minus 4. No, you do not need to put the 1 up front. So for number 2, if we did our elongated L here, my coefficients would be a 3 for x to the third, an 8 for x squared, but there is no uh, x to the first power, so you have to represent it with a 0. And then you have a 5 for your constant. So that 0 is the thing that gets people a lot on this uh, next quiz. So make sure that you're careful about that. If we set x plus 4 equal to 0, that's the number that goes on the outside. So we'd end up with negative 4. Oops, I didn't put a negative there. So that's what goes on the outside. And then we just start that process of dropping down the first number always. And then multiplying the outsides. Adding these together. Multiply the outsides. Add 0 plus 16, which is 16. Multiply the outsides, that's negative 32, 64. And we get a remainder this time of negative 59, which means that x plus 4 does not go into this 3x to the third plus 8x squared plus 5 evenly. It does have a remainder. So we would write it like this. This is my remainder. This is my constant. This is my x. This is my x squared. So we'd have 3x squared minus 4x plus 16 minus 59 divided by our original binomial of x plus 4. So that's how we would write that answer doing synthetic division. Okay, let's do a couple more. The more you see these, the faster you get at them. The first thing I noticed with number 3 is that my parentheses, that is my polynomial. So number four, if we set this up correctly, two on the outside. On the inside, we're missing some. I see that it's in order, but we are missing uh, an x to the fourth, so we have to represent it with a zero. Uh, we do have the x to the third. We do not have an x squared, so we have to represent that with a zero. Uh, we do have an x, so it's a five, but we don't have a constant, so we have to represent that with a zero as well. So all these... Uh, zeros are just representing where there would be holes if you wrote this in order as such. So what do we got? Oopsie. X squared plus 
that would be the original with um, with all the placeholders of zero. So this four gets dropped. We multiply the outsides, add the zero plus eight together, and we get eight. We end up with 16, that gives me 10. Two times 10 gives me 20. 20 plus zero gives me 20 still. 20 times two is 40, we end up with 45. Two times 45 is 90, so zero and 90 gives me 90. So this one, uh, x minus two does not go into this trinomial evenly. It's got a remainder of 90. So this is what uh, this would look like if we did this correctly, because I know this is my constant, this is my x, this is my x squared, this is my x to the third, this is my x to the fourth. So those are all the coefficients that would go there. So our answer would be 4x to the fourth plus 8x to the third oopsie, plus 10x squared plus 20x plus 45. And then this remainder would be plus 90 divided by, what was the original? Oh, x minus 2. So that would be my answer for that one. And number 5, why don't you pause it here and see if you can do 5 on your own, and then I'll do it as well. And then you'll see if you get the right answer. Oh, no. Sorry. I must hit the back button somehow. See if we can find it on the side here. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Where are we? Mm, no. We're before that. Before that. We're at 6.5. Here we are. Okay. I think we were on number five. All right, so now if we did this correctly, you'd have oops, um, negative one, and then we have x to the third is a four, x squared is negative two, x to the first is six, and then we have this constant of negative one. So we have a four, negative four, negative six, it's a positive 6, 12, negative 12, negative 13. I believe, let me check it, 4, negative 4, negative 6, 6, 12. Yeah, that's the correct answer. So this x plus 1 does not go into it even, evenly. So that means that our answer here would be 4x squared minus 6x plus 12 minus this 13 over x plus 1. So that would be your answer for that last one. All right, then the last part is just some uses for synthetic division. So it says, first, to determine if a binomial is a factor of, an, of another polynomial, you can use synthetic division. If the remainder is zero, then it is a factor. And I've said that a few times. It goes into it evenly. So let's see. I'm guessing one of these will probably work. And one of these won't. So if we do synthetic for number one, negative one would be the outside number. The inside number is our R2, 5, and 17. So we bring down the 2, negative 2, 3 if we add them, negative 3. So 14 is my remainder. So it says use to division to determine whether the first polynomial is a factor of the second. If it is, then factor the second. Well, this is not. So no, it is not a factor. Just because it has a remainder. If it had a remainder of zero, then we say yes. And we would try to factor what's left over. This one here, I'm guessing will work. because Typically, we'll give you one of each in your notes, I would think. I hope. Uh, let's see, we got negative 4, negative 8, 4, 0. All right, so this uh, was a remainder of 0. So this is yes, it is a factor. And uh, when we 
say it is, we're talking about x minus 2 is, is a factor of that x cubed minus 6x squared plus 12x minus 8. And then it says factor the remainder. So the remainder is x squared minus 4x plus 4. If we factored it, that's x minus 2 twice. So that would be the factored version of the answer. This last one you can pause right now, try on your own, and see if you get it right. Okay, one, okay, one, zero, one, zero, negative two. The reason why those zeros are there is because we didn't have an x to the third or an x to the first. So if we bring down the first one, 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 two, one, two, one, two, two, looks like it, it's a yes. X minus one is a factor. Does it ask you to continue to factor? If so, yeah, it does. So that would be x to the third plus x squared plus 2x plus 2. Um, factoring that, there's four terms. It's probably grouping. You pull out an x squared from these two. Pull out a 2 from these two. And we're left with x squared plus 2 is one of our answers. And the other one that shows up twice is x plus 1. So that would be our answer. So then that's what we have. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.